Hi, I'm Mike Montagna. How do we fix the pretended economies of the world? If they are just or sufficiently right, why do they require attendance at all? How could just, sustainable economy manifest in the expatriation and destruction of our industry and the loss of 10,000 homes a day, not only now, but a mere 15 years into the first life cycle of the facade we call economy. Why can't we establish justice and rectitude immediately and without cost? What is true economy? What is just economy? What is sustainable economy? Do we have these things or do we not? If people charged with acting on ostensible answers to these questions, have genuine answers for us. Why have you not been made fully aware that anything they intend to do is actually solution? Absolute answers to these questions are vital to any self-ruling people because no people can deliver monetary justice to themselves without the one set of answers which enables them to do so. The answers are not mysteries. They are elementary, readily discerned, and concrete. There is no valid argument against the absolute answers, and there is no deviation from them, if we are to achieve an ability to preserve and deserve monetary justice. Nothing could be further, then, from abiding by the vital principles than to suffer the vast present injustices and unfolding failure. For what country or world's industry would fail merely because it refused to understand two fundamental rules far beneath its general technical capabilities, which would otherwise sustain not just its present or past industry, but its full potential to prosper without impediment. What are those two indispensable rules? To understand the answers to these questions and to profit from those answers, the people of the world must give their most serious attention to some underlying process. For there is a cause of the present failures, and we can identify that cause with certainty, or we can never identify or achieve solution. As John Kennedy reminded us, such a problem is man-made. Because such a thing is of our making, we can solve it, if not simply by not doing whatever is the problem. In other words, in any domain of solely human processes, and particularly where the governing principles are so simple, nothing obstructs us from perfecting systems or solution but ourselves or others. Likewise, the engineers of a bridge who must conquer the problems of nature can never build a successful bridge if they never perceive the vital principles. What we are about to demonstrate is that from their beginning, the purported economic systems imposed upon the world can only fail, that they have finite and even determinable lifespans, and that these systems persist only as a matter of intentional abuse of power. Anything less then than broad public conviction to unerring understanding condemns us to political and monetary failure. In that interest in unerring understanding then, diligent people will want to review this material more than once as its concepts become more clear to you. What you will understand in the end, after taking all of this in, will make even this seemingly challenging introduction obvious. In 1979, I stood alone in advocating an original thesis of inherent monetary failure, that the pretended economies of the world ultimately terminate themselves under insoluble debt, and that there is one and one only integral solution of the categoric faults of these systems. This perhaps seemingly dense expression may at first appear complicated, but numerous whole books, thousands and thousands of pages, have recently pretended as much 
as to author this vital idea 30 years after the fact, saying far less, and falling short of making solutions so clear as we will endeavor in just a few minutes.